7th of April 2014 steering column reassembly just borrowed one I had a spare uh, right got the book here instructions on how to take it apart and how to put it back together well I've already got it in bits on the earlier videos as you saw I had a spare one there I was just checking the references on that but <clears throat> I actually didn't need to look at the spare one but the book gives me enough info so that's that repowder coated casing and then you've got your parts laid out from the top that circlip was a washer, a circlip, a bearing and another circlip and you just basically reverse engineer it uh, bottom bearing there that stayed on this shaft and um, that's one off the other one that was all corroded up that other one by the way okay anyway that's that uh, steering column won't need this one now I was just comparing 70, uh, 790 mil 790 mil for the total length of the shaft it does move on this collapsible column so if you took it apart you could have disturbed it I've just tapped mine in so it's 790 that slides over there if you have a crash that telescopic it collapses so you don't um, injure yourself on the end of the steering wheel so the whole idea is this whole tube and everything crushes in, a, in an impact and that slides up but set it the right length when you put it back together 790 mil plus or minus um, a mil okay so we're gonna we've put the first circlip back on this now with that circlip on and the bottom bearing on you can put that on after I've left that on this now slides inside the tube you then slide the bear tap the bearing down into it top bearing and then another circlip and then you've got a washer and then a final circlip and then that's back inside the tube I'm just going to get some cloths and keep everything clean because you notice the floor's dusty there so I'll just wipe everything down so putting the steering column back together it's pretty straightforward really right shafts in but the first bearings on lower circlip there just behind it some grease into the bearing there check it's clean now we're going to put the bearing dust cap over that slides on there now and then we'll put that stuff back into the put the shaft back into there the rest of the retaining clips go on okay the assembly's all back together circlips in bearing greased caps on shaft in tubes in bottom bearings in steering lock uh, snap bolts going on next steering locks in position I've got it locked on the shaft it's going to put the key in and check that uh, the shaft turns and releases before I finally snap the heads off these one-way bolts here which you use to put the saddle clamp on you tighten till they shear and you, that's your security bolt stop people undoing it and nicking your steer well undoing your steering lock so we'll nip them up stick the key in put the steering wheel on move it make sure we're happy with it check that it's all in the right place we've not got anything wrong and then uh, snap the heads off the bolts and that's the steering column unit ready to go we're going to fit the gasket mics tip for the top fit this in first into the bulkhead grease the inside of that with some silicon and then when you uh, push your shaft down there it's already in don't put that on the steering column first put it in the bulkhead first thanks Mike for that one okay let's tension them up and put the key in check it just took the opportunity to put some grease on that uh, locking steering lock just so it's just there and right so pop that back on now snap bolts on away we go it's working just make sure everything's working before you do those snap bolts.
If you put this, if it's not quite lined up this, the key won't turn, so you've got to make sure you're still free. Double checking again. Do it a few times. Yep. Okay, nip up a bit more. Double check again. Yep, okay. This socket might not have the power to snap these, I don't know. Yep, that's one gone. That's just so, yep, we're still okay. Do the second one then. There she goes. Not much, there's not much torque on them actually, they snap pretty easy. Hope to hell this goes now, yet we're on. So there's been no chance. So that's it. Okay, let's get that let's get that in the car. Snip that up. Hold on, snip that up. There we go. Not too tight now, those captive nuts. Ah, I'm gonna have to whiz this off guys. Hold on. Long that one. Short one at the back. At least it's lined up now. Short about for that. It's probably this one. Right, so that's it. That's in. Locked on. There's that uh, steering lock there. We're belted in here. At the back. That's solid. There's your pedal box accelerator there as well. So we're starting to get some controls in. Everything's ready. Right, I'll keep on going, see if there's any more hidden bits behind the back of here before I can start thinking about the dashboard hookup. Okay, so we're getting close to dashboard now. Looking really good. Okay, brake pedal's connected. We're actually pushing on the servo now. You can hear that drawing and the brake so uh, brake cylinders going as well clutch cables on and the rev cables on they're just hanging in the bay they're all up there so steering columns in brake pedal boxes are all connected nothing underneath there now next is the washer squirty bottle to get the tube in for that I'm seriously considering the dash now it's getting exciting Oh, some heater controls to go on. Let's get the heater controls on now and get the heater flap controls running. Here we go for that. How long will it take to fit this onto there? What a horrible job. Wish me luck. Aren't you happy you're not here doing this with me? Okay, it's just going to cut from this straight to it. And a lot of pain. See you in a bit. Right, that one was easy. 15 minutes and it was on. Don't know why. Okay, subframe mount bush is going in. The bolts are pulled together there, it's quite easy. A bit of grease on there, silicon grease. Bolt through, squeeze it up, away you go. We've got uh, four to do. So first one going in now. A little uh, tab there fits in with that hole there. There's an offset one on the inboard. And then they're, they're straight in the middle on the outboard ones. There's your set there. We've got those uh, tabs there, these centralised ones are at the front and the offset ones at 3 o'clock at the back. They're slightly offset on that one there, as you can see. There's your offset. Okay, let's get them fitted. See you in a sec. Once you've got your bushes in, if you want to get your locating tab bang on, if you've been bringing it in and it's drifted out and your, light, your locking tab lands just out the wrong place, just get a, a bigger bolt, a 19 head on that, and bolt it both sides, grip it, and with two spanners you can just twist the entire bush around and it'll lock in place. So we just did that on a 19, I just twist the whole bush around and then you're in. So you just fine tune those in so they land in the tabs, where's your bolt out. It's quite easy to do. Plenty of silicon grease on uh, to make the job easier. This one, as you can see, just landed out. So we'll put that seven, that 19 bolt in there now and I'll just twist the whole bush so it drops in. We'll do that for all of them. So you've got 
this cup uh, that a longer bolt that squeezes it in and gets you in and then a bolt there just to finalize it and lock it in to the tab there there you go Yeah, that's the beastie I use to get them subframe brushes on. Okay, no problem with that. Send uh, bush removal tool set up. All done. See you in a bit. I've done that. That dash top's arrived. Finished that. So that's nice. I've done some. The bonnet release cable's working well. I've aligned that up. That's perfect. Some cables going in. Accelerator cable, clutch cable, washer jets are set up. There's your new tubing on the washer jets in there, the uh, join there going through the bulkhead into the washer pump and then coming out to the bottle. Cables on, tested and lined up and greased up there. Uh, we've done the indicators now, that needed to have a bit of alignment on it just to get it flush. The bracket at the back, I just bashed it back a bit, that's all, and then took a little bit of metal off the inside and then just to get that flush the other side was already done by my key this side needed tuning in but it's flush now and that line going down and also that's, that's been put in with a, a putty at the base of the indicator unit which is squidged out there so I'll just get that out the putty seals the light unit in so you don't get mud coming out from the front of your car dribbling out down the front and also just seals the unit in and it stops it rubbing on the paint that is a factory job if you look in the Ford uh, factory manual it does show the putty all squidged out at the back of the indicator so I got that idea from the book you'll see there now that's squidged out that's how it's supposed to be that seals the whole unit in and, and it's non-setting so it comes out you can just see a bit of it there so we just get a cotton bud in there and smear that straight they're new old stock indicators so we're on with that. I can just probably go up across just to the right a little bit. One one mil, just just that that bolt there, and just slide it across. That's uh, an elongated hole, as you probably know. So you can move your indicator across. It's not far off. One mil across there, just to pick that nib up. But, um, for Cortina indicators, it's not bad. So uh, that seals that up. Um, I've just been going around ready for a bit more wax oil. I've just finalised the fixing of this front edge. A bit more sealer went in on that back plate. Uh, coming out onto the front, so I'll touch that in. Side trim's on on this side. I've sourced that, fitted that, so we've got side trim all the way down. That just clips straight on. Um, what else have we got? What else have we got? Draft excluded on the bottom of the doors fitted. That's this unit here. That's there, that just clips in. That butts up against the sill, it stops uh, resonance, um, air resonance in this cavity here. 